had the privilege of introducing our next speaker to Asha. I did a story with him through Kind is Better. His name is Austin. I'd like to welcome him down here to the stage. And he's going to talk about his transparent experience with the military and how one person has the power to save a life. Growing up, I heard many stories from my great-grandfather about his experience in the Army Air Corps right after uh, World War II. More recently, I talked to my uncle who served in the Air Force when I was visiting Minnesota in 2018. So naturally, I grew up in a family that was very grateful for this beautiful country and obviously the men and women who enlist. I decided when I was 13 years old that I would enlist in the Air Force. My choice of branch changed my senior year of high school when I was talking with a couple of my friends. And uh, I went to go talk to my mom about it. And she handled it the same way as any other mother would. She wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> so I kind of sat there that night and I thought about it. And I did the rebellious thing and I still went Marine Corps. <laughs> I survived a small town high school graduating class of about 68. Uh, so I figured I could survive anything. I went to boot camp September of 2014, just three months after graduating high school. That wasn't too bad of a big deal. I mean, it's not like full metal jacket status. Uh, after boot camp, I went to my MOS schooling in Pensacola, Florida, where I, would, where I would meet friends I still have to this day. But I lost a lot of friends when I came out saying that I was mentally unhealthy. Brotherhood is one of the main factors why I'm grateful to serve my country and why I served. But the theme of brotherhood is almost a facade when you come out and say, you know, hey, I'm not feeling all right in the head or stuff like that. But before I delve too much into my story, I'm just going to preface it with the armed forces. Every chain of command is different. This isn't going to be every story. So at the school, or after the school in Pensacola, uh, well, while I was attending, I had a friend pass away. Uh, he was on recruiter's assistant, so he was back home. And he, uh, he passed in a car accident. There wasn't you know, anything I could do. I didn't have any coping skills. And unfortunately, that was the second fatality that I would be shown to, I guess, uh, while being in the military or prior. Uh, 2013, I lost a friend sophomore year, but I couldn't hang up too much on it because I still had you know, high school to go through. I had to enlist and all this, so I couldn't really, I had to do it for him. So it was more like a uh, motivation too. Now, with Kyle's passing, I didn't have any coping skills. I didn't have anybody to talk to. I didn't really have any motivation to help me through that. And there's a toxic trait in a lot of chain of commands that if you didn't deploy or go overseas or you didn't have this much time in service, you don't rate to talk to a counselor. You don't deserve it. You don't, your mental health issues are basically devalued. So I just held down all of those emotions and everything until I got to my second schooling in uh, Camp Pendleton. That's when everything kind of resurfaced, and I was just, I had a plan to end it all, uh, unfortunately. But before that, I would talk to one of my NCOs who was from where some of my cousins are from, so it was kind of like talking to a cousin about it. And so <laughs> I talked with him, and I kind of sat him down and I was like, hey, I'm not feeling too good. And he goes, oh, I'll just go to medical. I was like, uh, this, isn't a, this isn't a physical thing there, uh, Sergeant. I, I feel like taking my own life. And he kind of looks at me and he goes, okay, we'll get you help. And that, my first experience, that was my first experience of changing the mindset of we as a brotherhood to me, 
I, I need to get myself help or else I'm going to let my brothers down. Along the path of seeking help, I felt constantly judged wherever I went, whether it was walking around the barracks or going to my medical appointments. But one thing I always reminded myself, it was a saying that the same NCO that I talked to before, uh, he told me when I was getting checked into the hospital in San Diego, he said, it takes a very strong person to admit something's wrong. Little did I know at the time that he once struggled with mental illness and addiction to alcohol. He's still one of my role models whenever I feel down about getting treatment. 2018, those feelings resurfaced and they were more strong than ever. I was about an hour away from driving to my designated spot and ending it all. I sent out a tweet prior to coming home that night saying, I need somebody to talk to. Luckily, one of my closest friends saw it and she told my parents that I needed help. The past year and couple months have been filled with constant reminders that people care about me and are willing to help me understand and take care of my mental health. To this day, I still struggle with all that is ill within my head. I was later diagnosed with major depressive disorder, general anxiety, non-combat PTS, and more recently, bipolar. These illnesses affect my daily life. It's hard for me to find a job I can trust. My most recent job, working with a major computer company, I was terminated legally because I was in a hospital in Kirkland, Washington, and I wasn't available for work, so they terminated my contract. That kind of sucked. <laughs> it's not easy to adjusting to civilian life, even just being briefly in for about a year and a month and 28 days. And it's not easy for people who have been in longer than I have. Same with admitting you need help. Although the st statistic used to be 22 veterans and their da life daily, we, we've reduced that number to about 20, which I'm thankful for that we've saved two more veteran lives a day, but it's still a big number that we should not have. Hopefully, I'll live to see the day that it's zero veterans a day. The truth is, we're not weak for seeking help and being vulnerable. Being vulnerable gives us strength through love and camaraderie. As the old saying goes, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Take, for example, if I was in a physical injury, or if I had a physical injury, I'd seek help immediately, even if it was life-threatening or non-life-threatening. So why not encourage one another to seek help when we're thinking about harming ourselves? Why are we treating mental illnesses more differently than physical ones? When we become vulnerable and open to our emotions, it allows us to be more knowledgeable to our emotions and help us understand other people's emotions, allowing us to help other people who are struggling with mental health issues as well. Instead of judging one person's erratic behavior, you can come to reason that they might not be in the best place mentally right now, and maybe their treatment isn't working for them. I urge everyone to reach out to your friends, veteran or non-veteran, and see if they're, how they're doing. Every other day, every day, just make sure you maintain that constant contact. If they're having a bad day, make sure they're okay and they're not going to hurt themselves or each other or just a complete stranger. But if you have that probable cause that you, know, you don't trust them being alone, tell somebody you trust, get, take them to the appointments or take them to the institution because you, you don't want to live with the regret of, I could have saved this person's life. Thank you.